sir, for your introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my topic and the paper that I'll be focusing on writing is e-governance in the court system of Sri Lanka. Well, in an information-driven, innovative society, most national institutions presently are focusing on business process re-engineering as well as systematically redesigning their organizational processes. In that light, we feel that it is an emerging trend and therefore I intend proposing an e-code system which is expected to enhance the efficiency as well as the effectiveness of the judicial administration as well as the relief mechanisms provided by the national court system. In my study, I've just done a basic root cause analysis focusing on the problem areas that the present court system may be, uh, may be encountering. For example, the management perspective as well as the infrastructure, moreover, the workforce and also the operational processes, which may lead to increasing in administrative costs. So my research problem is focusing on Despite the e-courts being a proxy for innovation in a knowledge-based economy, why is there a lack in the adoption of technology by the legal professionals as well as the court administrators and of course the citizens who ultimately become the stakeholders of the e-court system? Hence my hypothesis, which I would be focusing on would be increased adoption of e-governance will contribute to enhanced justice, rule of law, as well as the efficient judicial administration. Focusing on e-governance, according to the 2013 latest definition, I quote, e-governance is the commitment to utilize appropriate technologies to enhance governmental relationships in order to advance the, dip, the democratic expressions, human dignity, and encourage fair and efficient delivery of public services. In this light, we could see that e-governance would facilitate the successful design and implementation of an e-government in Sri Lanka. That is, in terms of government to citizen in the cases of litigation, as well as government to government in extrajudicial mechanisms such as arbitration. Focusing on the universal precepts applicable for e-governance, legitimacy and voice, for example, it would focus on the participation of the public and also the liberty, how the courts could give the proper mechanism of relief to the required parties. Secondly, focusing on fairness, it would be focusing on the rule of law equity and also equality. Direction would be focusing on a strategic vision. The court system, starting from the higher courts, going all the way to the courts of first instance, would be having a strategic vision to do justice to the uh, litigants as well as the general public at large. Performance would be focusing on responsiveness, responsibility and also efficiency. Definitely there are confidential cases going on, so all cases may not be able to be made public and the client's information is very sensitive. However, the accountability is the key because focusing on accountability means that courts should be accountable for all what the courts are doing and the public should be held, courts would be holding the public in custody and also giving them a responsible outcome of their relief mechanisms. Looking at the several implications in my paper, I will be focusing on the legal implications that the e-court system may face. Now I need to also highlight that information technology is no longer a luxury. It is more or less, we could call it a commodity. So according to our present laws, it seems that there is a sound and a progressive legal system. For example, if we take the Electronic Transactions Act of 2006, Section 3 clearly says that 
the electronic document shall not be denied any legal recognition or enforceability based on it being in an electronic form. Also, if you look at the Arbitration Act of 1995, it clearly says that an arbitration award can be in written form. So all in all, we could see that the courts are in a clear position of weaving or, of course, amending certain requirements. For example, the procedural requirements and the form requirements. So in such a case, we could interpret that either a handwritten document or an electronic document is accepted. Therefore, it would not cause any formal invalidity or any kind of substantive invalidity in the judicial administration. However, this still remains a challenge for the simplest reason that the e-culture is not yet well inculcated even amongst the citizens and also among the legal professionals who need to adopt it. So looking at the technology angle, according to His Excellency the President's uh, Mahinda Chintana roadmap, in 2016, the IT literacy rate would at least reach 75%. So that clearly shows that there is a positive response towards adopting technology and related uh, resources. However, it is understood that with time and age, most citizens have a resistance to change in adopting the modern technology mechanisms, which means that lack of adoption. So therefore, the developers of these systems need to, of course, think about how you could integrate with the users in a much user-friendly manner, and therefore, user-friendliness is something that is very important and how the people would integrate with the systems is critical. Looking at the socio-economic implications, I would focus on systems such as these would be an innovative idea. So in that sense, presently according to the Lanka Business Report, Sri Lanka is in the 82nd place in terms of its innovative index. So in that sense, we need to develop and we could, through a system like this, we could enhance our status of innovation. Also, if you look at the budget in 2013, 9, 9 billion rupees have been allocated in terms of the research and development for government institutions. So this would be an idea of picking up more innovative ideas to enhance the public service and its uh, resources. So the potential stakeholders of the e-court system would be, in main, the legal fraternity, of course, the technology services, and also the financial support. The key would be that no one is uh, on, uh, above anyone else. Each needs to positively take response and work towards developing an e-court system. Of course, presently, the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal of Sri Lanka is online. So basically, its activities are limited to viewing the va various court lists, the judgments, of course, the special determinations and sittings. So uh, in my proposing system, I would like to suggest something like an e-filing system and also maybe document sharing amongst the litigants as well as the legal um, professionals in terms of maybe the written submissions because now certain, if, for example, if a judgment is delivered, it could be with, uh, with respect to confidentiality of the information, it could be made available to parties and also update the cases, again subject to confidentiality. Then looking at the extrajudicial mechanisms such as the arbitration proceedings, when an award is given, there could be the enforcement mechanism is definitely by the courts. So through an e-court system, the parties and the governments which are uh, on either side could definitely integrate online and submit their awards and resolve their disputes and that will be a much, co much cost effective and an efficient mechanism. Definitely in real time, the productivity and the profitability of this system needs to be tested and it all depends on how the people the stakeholders adopt this system. Of course, I got the opportunity of analyzing and uh, studying the designing process of the e-court system at the Supreme Court uh, of Israel. Of course, it, uh, their, their mechanism is much efficient, and of course, we cannot be on par at the moment, but definitely something which the public services should be focusing on should be 
a mechanism that could en enhance the basic requirements of the public. So the potential system sh could be in the future something of this nature. Of course, it would take time and the very critical success factor stands if all the shareholders and the stakeholders in this system communicate, collaborate, and positively show an trend towards e-culture, that would be the best way. With that, I conclude my presentation, e-courts and e-governance in the court system of Sri Lanka. Thank you.